Hi, this is Deb from Deb's Days. It's Tutorial Tuesday and today we're going to make a set of heart coasters out of fabric scraps. They're perfect for Valentine's Day or even any time of the year. The measurements I'm using today will make four coasters. Along with your regular sewing supplies, for this project you will need one piece of backing fabric measuring nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches, one piece of foundation fabric measuring the same nine and a half by nine and a half. I'm using a piece of muslin, but you can use any kind of cotton fabric you might have around. One piece of cotton batting measuring nine and a half by nine and a half. Fabric scraps, actually fabric strips. Mine range from one to one and a half inches wide. You could go wider or you could go narrower. I'm going to go with black and white because I like the look against the red fabric I'm going to use. Red fabric scraps measuring at least 4 inches by 4 inches. You'll need one scrap per coaster. Or if you'd prefer all of your hearts to be made from the same fabric, just use a bigger piece of fabric. Something to use as a template for the heart. I'm using a cookie cutter, but you could use uh, something just cut out of a piece of paper if you'd like. Pinking shears if you want to have a zigzaggy looking edge. Glue stick, I like this purple disappearing glue. And then some basting spray. If you need a recommendation, I have one on debsdays.com. This entire supply list can be found at debsdays.com too. Check the description below this video for the direct link to that list. First, place your backing fabric right side facing down. Center your batting on top of that. Then add the foundation fabric. You need to secure all of these layers. This is where the basting spray is going to come in handy. Be sure to cover your workspace with something. The basting sprays overspray can get pretty sticky, so I like to use some kind of a paper that I can just throw away when I'm finished. I'm going to fold the top two layers back. Following the directions on your basting spray, spray one half of your batting. Fold it back. Now open up the other side of the two layers. And spray that side of the batting. Fold it back and smooth that out. Now we're going to pull back just the foundation piece. We probably could just take it all off and do it at the same time. And center it back on again and smooth it all out. Now on the foundation piece, place one of your strips right side up. I'm using the corners as my guide for my straight line. Now we're going to place a second strip on top of that first one with the right sides together. As I was digging in my fabric scraps for this project, I realized mine weren't long enough to uh, fill the whole space, so I went ahead and stitched a couple together. Since it's a scrappy fabric project, I think that was okay. So if you need to do the same, go ahead. So go ahead and put those right sides together. Make sure those edges are lined up. And then we're going to stitch right down this edge where these edges meet, um, about a quarter of an inch. Now I should have mentioned you could have pinned this um, before you do the sewing or just hold them together, uh, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I feel good about just holding it, so that's what I did. But if you needed to pin it, that's okay too. Now you'll notice I have some really scrappy edges right now. I might need these as I get a little farther into the project, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut them off real quick. Just be sure not to cut into your backing or your foundation or anything. So I'm just going to like a real generous cut there. Now we're going to press this open. You can finger press or you can use your iron. All right now I'm going to place my next strip. I'm going to be sure it's going to fit first. Oh, not quite. You can see I'm missing a little bit there, so I can either attach it, another piece to it, or I can just grab a different length. I'll look and see what else I have over here. All right, looks like I have another one that I've uh, sewn together, so I'll just use that. I think I'll start it up here. 
So place it up there, a little off the edge. Again, right sides together. We're going to stitch along this edge now. Again, if you want to pin, go ahead, or if you just want to hold it and sew, you can do that. All right, be right back. All right, I have that uh, sewn about a quarter of an inch. Like I said, about, you can do a half inch, quarter inch, eighth of an inch. Even if you do different seam allowances on each piece, it's okay. This is a scrappy project, so it doesn't matter. So go ahead and press this open. I'm going to go ahead and cut off. Um, I have a little, a longer piece I might need again. I'm going to cut that off. Then another strip. And go ahead and continue until you get to the end, till the end's covered. All right, as you can see, I'm all the way has the corner covered. I'm just going to flip this around now. And we're going to work from this side out. Back at it. Right sides together. Stitch, press open. And keep working your way all the way to this corner. I've gone all the way to the edge on the other side and you can see my edges are looking a little raggedy. If we turn it over we can really see how raggedy they are. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off all that extra without cutting into our little sandwich here. I guess this is where I need to kind of tell on myself here. As I was cutting my backing for this project I was in a hurry and just did a real zip zip thinking I cut nine and a half but if you see I actually cut nine. I didn't have, I wanted to use this fabric here. I had no other fabric to use. So while my measurements wound up having to be nine by nine, you will want the nine and a half, nine and a half. It'll make it um, easier when it comes to the pinking shears. It'll give you a little more leeway. I'm gonna go ahead and trim all that off. And now it's time for the pinking shears. So um, what you can do, what we need to do is cut this into four equal coasters using your pinking shears. So you want to divide that up. Since you're using a nine and a half by nine and a half, you want each square to be four and three fourths by four and three fourths. You can either just use, like I said, use your pinking shears to do it, or what I'm going to do, I like cutting from the side better. Just I'm going to go ahead and use my rotary cutter. To... which is what I have here. I've just cut uh, straight with my rotary cutter. Now I'm gonna go back and trim these edges. If you want to, you can leave them like this if you'd like, but I think I'm gonna do pinking shears. In fact, I'll do some, uh, a couple both ways so you can see what the difference looks like. Go ahead and use your pinking shears. I have to just barely go because like I said, my uh, base was a little bit smaller than it should have been. And go ahead, if you're doing shears, go ahead and go all the way around all of them gone ahead and done two with the pinking shears and I left two with straight edges. Now what we need to do, even though these are pretty well secured, I'm going to take a stitch all the way around all of these. You can go in at quarter inch, half inch, somewhere in between if you'd like, but just something to secure them a little bit better. Now that I have all four done, I'm going to go ahead and set those aside for a little bit and grab that uh, scrap, those fabric scraps that you're using for your hearts or your one piece like I have. Um, and then grab your template, like mine's a cookie cutter. I'm gonna go ahead and trace around the template four times. I'm not sure that you can see the tracing or not, but I can. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out next. Now that I have all four of those cut, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my glue stick and then my coasters again. I'm going to use a glue stick on the back side of the fabric. Now this is going to be a temporary hold, not a permanent hold. And then center it however you'd like on your uh, coaster. If you want it at an angle or straight on, I'll do it a couple different ways so you can see what the difference looks like. And just get that stuck on there. Like I said, it's not permanent, so just make sure it's held on there because we're going to be stitching around that in a minute. Okay, now we're going to need to stitch around the heart to make it permanent. You can use any of your stitches on your machine to secure it, or you can even hand stitch it if you prefer. I'm going to go with a zigzag stitch with some red thread. All right, one is done with the zigzag stitching. You can even see it on the back. I'm going to go ahead and do that with all the rest of them. All right, and we're all finished. Now, if you need more absorbent coasters, I would say add an extra layer of batting when you're putting these together. We're in Idaho in the winter. 
we don't need a lot of absorbency from coasters, so I just went with one. But if you're in a warmer climate or you're using these during uh, warmer times where there will be a lot of moisture off your draining off your uh, glass, add that extra layer of batting. If you'd like to see more craft projects like this one, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and stop by the blog at debsdays.com. You'll find free patterns, supply lists, and links to more sewing and crafting videos. See you next week with another project.